Hi, good morning. Joanna here. I've, I'm just coming to the end of uh, 30 days live streaming in my private Facebook group, Wounds That Heal, where I went through a devotional that I wrote, wrote Lord, I Want to Be Made Whole, where I went, and I went through and went really deep into each of the topics that I wrote about. At the end of the course, which ends on Friday, I have a course that's available, The Journey Back from Broken, where I chart my course of healing and also the strategies that I use with my clients in private practice because I'm also a counselor that does private practice. But I wanted to do these videos just as an introduction to that course also and I'll tell you some more about that in, in, the, in subsequent videos. But I also wanted to, to make these available to a wider audience to talk to more people because as I go around and speak, I've spoken all across the UK and as I go around and speak, one of the things that I find that people battle with a lot is, you know, as they go through their journey of emotional healing and some people, this, this thing can cause some people to not go on the journey at all. It's at the root of most negative emotions. It pops itself up in so many different locations, so many different places. It stops you from talking. It stops you from sharing. It stops you sometimes from admitting to yourself that you need help and support. And you know, it, it's so far reaching that I find that it, it needs to be tackled. I'll tell you what it is. The last time I shared my story, I was speaking in September to a room full of about 300 women. And I shared my story of healing from sexual abuse and this woman came up to me and she said, how do you do that? How do you go in and out of your story and is okay? And I said, because I'm healed, I've gone on my journey. And you know, it, it's not possible to do that without healing. But I remember a time at the beginning, before I ventured out, before I decided to take the journey and, and heal, where I was ashamed. And that's what I wanted to talk about today, shame. You know, shame, as I said, is at the root of many negative emotions. But shame also stops people from sharing, from reaching out for support. Are you fe if you're feeling uncomfortable right now, I totally understand. Because there was once upon a time when shame made me ashamed. And, but I, I think I always talk about the really difficult subjects. And because I think it's time for us to make them no longer taboo make them areas that we are comfortable with talking about because if we don't become comfortable in talking about these these big subjects like abuse domestic abuse and and sexual abuse and all the things that are holding us captive it is going to take longer for people to heal and if we don't learn to have a conversation about it and become comfortable with it what's going to happen to our children who, who is going to make it okay for them to talk about things when things happen to them? We have to become comfortable with these subjects now. And so I don't mind starting the conversation because I've kind of worked through my shame thing and it no longer holds me. But I'm also passionate about the people that I know that I've met as I grow around and speak who still battle with shame, who still battle with guilt, who still have problems connecting in relationships, who still feel like, who still tell themselves that loneliness and isolation and when they withdraw, that they like being on their own, they still believe that lie. Well, you know, throughout these three videos, I want to really go deep into these subjects and talk about them because I think it's time for us to have an open and honest conversation around these subjects. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper in shame. Now, I come from a Christian perspective, so I wanna read this, um, verse in Isaiah 61 verse 7 and I'm, when, when I heard this verse for the first time I was excited because I said once again we have everything that we need in order to move through the places that we are so that we're no longer we don't no longer have to be bound by these things and it says instead of shame you shall have honor instead of shame you shall have honor now shame is an uncomfortable topic isn't it not many people want to talk about it but if it's at the root of many negative emotions, I think we should have an open and honest discussion about it. What are, this, what are the things that we are ashamed about? You know, um, 
if you really think about it right now or allow yourself to you'll realize that there are things in your life that probably would be shame generating experiences you know i don't know what can be more shameful than abuse <laughs> i used to think it was written across my forehead and everybody could see it and so therefore when i go anywhere when i am around people then i had to really wear this mask and kept it firmly in place because nobody could know i was terribly ashamed of a childhood trauma nothing i had anything to do with i didn't contribute to something that happened to me yet still it was shameful and even when after i you know the lord told me that i needed to start sharing my story now because it would help other people become free there was still some resilience resistance from me and i had to go through a process of developing resilience emotional resilience where i could walk my journey of healing and get to the place where it was okay for me to be vulnerable and really didn't mind the repercussions and sometimes when you're vulnerable there are people who will see it in many different ways and people who will make many many different comments but when you know why you're doing what you're doing you can keep doing it now my passion is to do, make the uncomfortable comfortable make the subjects that are shameful normalize them and make people be okay the woman who is in an abusive relationship but is ashamed to talk about it and she's in a group of friends but their life seems so happy that surely she don't want to be the person where the marriage is failing and if you're in an abusive relationship you, your marriage is not failing because of anything that you have done and I, and I really want you to embrace that and you know sometimes as as women and that's my larger art, our audience that we can sometimes be really not very kind to each other because the support that we should offer we don't and what we do instead is judge there's another area where where there's a lot of um shame and, and judgment it's around parenting but you know as i said for many years shame kept me silent it took my language it influenced my friendships or lack of friendships i had many people in my life but not many people know me to the depth that they do now because i didn't allow anyone access to that part of me and even after therapy sometimes there are things left over for you to deal with for you to work through um, shame won't go away because you've you've spent a year in therapy it certainly didn't go away for me and there were other things that I had to do use other self-help resources to get me to become comfortable with with my past to no longer mourn what wasn't to allow myself the the room um, to embrace the memories and to find out what I needed to learn from them at that time because what I realized is that every time there was a memory there was something for me to learn and so as I walk people through their journey now I don't talk about mine because I need to talk about it I talk about it because I know that there are many people who struggle with talking about theirs I know that there are many people who want to be free but they don't know how and I share mine only to do that not because I you know particularly still struggle with anything now shame tells us that something is wrong and so we live in this kind of parallel worlds where we can't be honest we we can't be really truly who we are we spend time trying to to hide as I said behind a mask sometimes and to live a certain kind of lie because we're ashamed now there is a there is shame destroys hope because when you're ashamed you don't want to reach out for support you don't want to shame stops you from hoping that there might be something else to this life that it doesn't uh, it doesn't it can't offer anything else than, than what it is shame tells you that you're not good enough 
And there are many experiences I'm sure that we experience in life that sometimes shame will tell us that. Shame starts with a lie. As I said, I'm not good enough. And it isolates. Shame is not willing to take a risk. The risk of sharing. The risk that I took to share my story in the hope that it will help somebody. Shame says don't take that risk because nobody will will want to hear it. Nobody will listen. Nobody will it will it won't resonate with anyone. Shame makes you secretly hide that thing that is really sending you to rock bottom over and over and over. And it makes you wear pretense like a cloak. Now sometimes shame become toxic as well and toxic shame is linked to negative influence from from our early childhood i i'm doing this series because i want you to have this the tools if you have been on a journey already this might help you to to take that journey a little bit further i want you to abandon shame and to really claim the honor that i read just now in Isaiah where God says instead of shame he wants to give you honor I want you to abandon that in, in in such a way that you can become vulnerable because friends if we're not vulnerable and if we're not able to relate to each other interpersonally and have really connected relationships and talk openly and many people have people in their lives but there's no depth to the relationships because you keep it at surface but the only position we can have with God is one of vulnerability. We can try to survive, but we, you know, can we afford to survive without him? No. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper in the next video around intimacy. And what does that mean? And what does that look like? And how we need that to survive? Because we are not, no man is an island, I like to say. No man is an island. I really believe in that. We need each other in order to survive. We need each other in order to move through the places that we're in at the moment and to get beyond that. But sometimes shame stops the process because we struggle with self-acceptance. And because we struggle with accepting ourselves, we think everybody else is going to struggle with accepting us too. So in my next video, I'm going to talk about intimacy and acceptance and how do we, what do we need to do in order to have close connected relationships and how can that help? I'll see you then.